YouTube, what's going on? You're now boxing with Chris BWC. Joining me today, Queen's finest, Lou Duvall, my brother. Record of 36 and 6, 2 and 17 in her career. How you doing today, my brother? I'm doing great, man. Um, you know, uh, you know what? In the office. In the office. In the yeah. office. I want to get into growing up in Queens. Obviously, you told me you were from Queens. <laughs> Queens Bridge, to be exact. I see it. Big names, Roxanne, Nas, Nas, Prodigy, big names, Ron Artest. But Talk the only me. world champion. Only world champion from Queens. You you hold that. Like basketball players. They and rappers. rappers. <laughs> Yo, I remember my brother growing up with Ron Artest, right? Um, I don't want to diss him. His name is World Peace. But, you know, I, I don't you know. But I remember doing a video with Nas, right? And my little brother was like, this is when he was playing for St. John. My little brother goes, you think he's going to remember me? I said, of course he's going to remember you. You and him used to fight all the time and argue. My, friend, my brother's little, he's big, right? So when we see him, he goes, my brother's name is Juan Nazario. It's her father. He goes, his, 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 name, his name was Peely. He goes, Peely. I said, I told you he was going to remember you. I want to talk to me. How did you get into boxing? Coming from a neighborhood, especially a, especially where you were from, where there's a big basketball, music-oriented side of Queens. Where How did how did boxing fall into your lap? Or did you I play was, any sports? I was a pure athlete. Played every sport. Yeah, so... Um, when I seen Hector Camacho fight, he was Puerto Rican, I was Puerto Rican, and I seen he was a lefty, right? I seen he was a southpaw, and I emulated him. That's why my knuckles was this way, because I knew how to fight already. Like, you know, when you got a guy in the street, they use their power in the front hand. I knew the remedy, and it always came natural to me. And then when I got on drugs, when I got on drugs, I moved to the Bronx, and I I looked I looked at a place named Morris Park, and it said free lessons, and I went in. I started at 20 years old. So you started boxing late, way later than your average Joe. Uh, my sister, 27, she's in the boxing hall of fame. And then, so who was the OG that guided you on your early journey? Um, Ulysses Jimenez. He was a, a old school fighter and, you know, but I was a natural. And, and I was hungry. I remember my grandmother, she used to make fun of me. She lived on the first floor. I lived on 164 in Gerard. And she used to call me White Tyson. She used to say, because she didn't speak English, oh, White Tyson. Oh, she used to, um, this is funnier. She say, you should be a punching bag in a gym Spanish. <laughs> and then, so did you jump into the amateurs or did you? I jumped right in my first year. I won the gloves. I won five fights. That only five amateur fights? No. One. I had three amateur fights, but I had five victories to win the gloves. Oh, all right. And then how many amateur fights before you went pro? If you, do you remember that? Uh, maybe a little less than 20. A lot of people interact with boxing people in the amateurs. Did you remember, Did you fight anybody that was, it turned out to be a pro in the amateurs? I mean, yeah. Um, the guy I beat in the quarterfinals, he, 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 he fought for the world title heavyweight. Dominican. Mm. I forgot his name. He fought Ruiz. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know exactly who you're talking about. And did, did, did somebody make the decision for you to go pro? Or is that something you knew after your first couple of the 10 amateur fights? Um, that's something you wanted? I fought in Bermuda on a pro am card. And the guy that recognized me signed me. And when you went pro, what was like a harsh reality that, like, damn. This boxing shit, I love it, but this took me by surprise. Whether it was business, money, 
some something that made you like, wow, that's kind of fucked up. In the beginning, it was um, politics. Like, you know, the people in the game of fake. Nothing not, 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 not in boxing is real. That's how I had my attitude. Because I already knew what like what life was about. Remember, I, I told you I was on crack. You know, I smoked ruler blunts. You know, I did drugs. That saved my life. When I went to move to the Bronx, I, I went hard. Do you remember what you bought with your first big payday? When that check first cleared, what, one of the, your first big first went to the strip first club, club. what you did? Oh, I, I, I <laughs> always went to the strip club. You know what? I didn't have the paychecks. <laughs> I stayed in there. My nickname was the Wedge Hall. <laughs> From your era, was something that fighters from today should have picked up from your era that could help them achieve or get to the next level? Hunger. You gotta want it. You gotta want it. And that's what these kids don't have. I had that hunger. I said, no matter what happens to me in this sport, this is how I'm gonna go out. I'm gonna go out like this. I wasn't gonna quit. And like I told you, I was an athlete. So I, I had nothing to lose. And talk to me. How did you how did you like end up meeting Roy Jones, getting into the camp and being his sparring partner? Obviously, you guys fought later down the road. That's my sister. Oh <laughs> she went to Pensacola. She went to Alabama University. Oh, it's an athlete family. Is that the whole? We was all athletes. We were ballers and everything. We had my sister played for Alabama University, but she had to go to junior college to get into Alabama. And Roy Jones, being one of the greatest fighters of all time, what was one of the, some of the things that when you trained with him, he was in the peak of his prime. What was one of the things that you learned from him or that that you can remember to this day that were just mesmerizing for an athlete? I just knew I could I could compete with the best. That's what Roy Jones taught me. He taught me that if I could hang out with him, I could hang out with anybody. You gotta remember, when I fought Virgil Hill, he had 22 title defenses. 22. I only had 22 fights. One ten round up. I smacked him. Smacked him in North Dakota in his hometown. We 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 talked about where we talk about because I want you to say this on camera. We talk when you talk about the Alex. What was what was what was his name? Alex Avila. Alex Arivas. Talk to me uh, about the Manny Pacquiao, the steroids and. Obviously, you trained Ronald Gabriel, who fought David Benavidez twice. The first fight was a very good fight. He knocked down David Benavidez. The second fight, you know, you told me that he had a cheater in his corner, which is, talk to me about that. I already knew that he was going to lose because he was with uh, my fighter, Ronald Gabriel, was um, with Eddie Mustafa. I did all the work. I put all that work in. Right? And he didn't pay me the way he was supposed to. So I was like, I'm not going to get into this, with this guy like that. You know, like, I'm not going to put my whole effort into him. It was like Badu Jack. He was with Eddie Mustafa. You understand? He was with Eddie Mustafa. And I gave him a firm warning get rid of him or I'm gone. He got rid of him. Ronald didn't do that. So what happened was, this is the biggest lesson that I'm gonna teach you. Alex Rivas was in his corner. And I already knew he was gonna lose, right? When he was with Pacquiao, right? They split apart, but he was still doing his thing. Think about this one. Al Heyman was representing Floyd Mayweather. He was, you know, 
So what happened was, a Pacquiao waited to the last minute to fight him. Like, the, 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 and he got old. What happened was, this is how the game is deep. Pacquiao fought Mayweather, right? For Mayweather, but Al Heyman made sure that he got tested. After Floyd retired, who signs Pacquiao? Al Heyman. Heyman. And what happens after that? The fight comes after 10 years, we get the fight. Now, he ain't getting tested. That's real. There's nothing fake about that. So you were telling me you, so you believe the allegations of Manny Pacquiao using steroids coming up from 108 pounds to 154 pounds. You believe it's true? Yeah, of course. It's true. I know for a fact it's true. How do you bring that power up there with you? You can't. That's nine weight classes. That's a nine weight class jump. And knocking out Kodo, knocking out uh, of Hatton. Who do you think? It's common sense. By, do you think he avoided testing or they were on his side? Because to not to get all oh, every, every great gets caught. Obviously, we've seen Canelo. We've seen all the greats somehow always hit the hit, you know, hit a pothole. I, I believe Roy Jones actually. Mm. Without that, with that power he had and that speed, he had to be cheap. Had to. Do you feel like people know and they turn the blind eye or they test who they want to test? I think they had a blind eye. They, they just play stupid. Like, let me give you a prime example. Canelo. There was this testing drug. Right? This is when I left uh, Badu. Badu was, was supposed to fight um, the, the nigga from... Uh, the, the guy, excuse my language, the guy from um, Canada, um, I forgot his name. He, the champ, uh, um, I always get tongue twisted. When I told my dude about him, I said, Watch, he's cheating. When I left him, that was my last fight with him. We won, we got totally robbed. We got robbed. The alley in Canada, right? My point is that when I let Padu, he decided to test Pasquale. That's what it is, Pasquale. When he tested him, they, they found everything in him. That's special drug testing. That's the same thing what happened to Canelo. WBC banned him. The WBC banned him. Banned, you know, the drug people for keeping it clean. So it's mostly a, a sanctioning body thing. Some sanctioning bodies are cleaner than others. Listen, when I fought Roy Jones, they got over 32,000. Remember, we fought for three belts. So what do you think, what do you think Canelo's bringing to the WBC? Millions of dollars. <laughs> Common sense. Come on, put it together. Put it together, all right. So, so you believe all these, all the, all the speculations were true. And this is an interesting question for you. With the social media and the exposure and the money now, were you happy with your career, or would you wish that you could fight now with the hunger that you have, like with the skill set that no, you have and the mind that you have? You know what? The greatest moment in my career was to win the gold glove. That was the greatest moment because then I certified myself as a fighter. When I became world champ, I knew I was going to be that. I knew I was going to be champ. Once I won those golden gloves, I knew I was destined to be a world champion. So, that, what I'm trying to explain to you is that I'm proud of myself. 
I didn't do this to be famous. I did it to prove something to myself. Life. I was, I was a crackhead. You know what I'm saying? The greatest moment was to win the Golden Gloves. I already knew I was going to be world champ after that. You think there's a fighter retire mentally or the body retires you first? Um, I retired myself. I retired. I, 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 I had the ones I fought. Um, I forgot the guy. Damn, I, I'm bad with names. France, the guy, the, the no, guy. No, no, no. I, I whipped his ass too. I should be three time world champ. <laughs> I got a draw in France. Come on, bro. My point is that I didn't do this to prove to anybody. I did it to prove to myself that I was somebody, that I was that guy, that I was an athlete, totally. I knew I was destined for greatness. I knew that, that this is what I was supposed to be. And did you know right away you wanted to train, or did you did you just take some time off and training found you, or you found training? Well, my last pro fight was at 41 years old. I fought a draw, and that's when I gave it up after that. I, I felt like I've been blackballed by Joe DeGuardia. You know, I felt, you know, you, 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 you know what they say? They say that he made more money than me. He got 33 percentage off me, and he stole 200 from me. He made more money than me. 200,000 a lot was back then was a lot of money. No, but 33 and a third plus 200, he made more money than me. Yeah, I, I can't make that up. It's a true story, and why I know because his partner. His partner told me they separated. So these are facts, I'm telling you. And so what? I should have made 1.2 million. I only made 850 plus and taking 33 and 30. So well, that's one of the, obviously one of the darkest sides in boxing. Yes. And in, in boxing today. Give me three fighters that you think could have fought in your era. When you had a stacked era where at least every era, I mean, every division had a Hall of Fame or a great caliber fighter. What three fighters today you think could have fought in any era? You could just drop him in there. He could be a world champion or compete. Well, for one, that's it. Hey, well, two, you know? That, that, I've been around that. I was around greatness. I got a check for 30 Gs for him. When Badu won the title. The reason I didn't leave Badu was because of Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather took care of me. I got 30, 10, 10, and 5. That's what kept me from staying. I didn't want to be in Vegas. I became an alcoholic. You understand? Being in Vegas by myself, no friends, lonely. No travel, nothing. A lonely man sport. Yeah, but it was bad because Vegas was bad. The opioid problem over there was the worst. The worst. I know about drugs because I experienced seeing it or doing it. And I saw all the opioid heads walking in Vegas like like skeletons. It, there's a drug spot around my house. And I live in Gosnick. I live in a good area. I got a great house. But I see you walking by. I already know you are you're a drug dealer. All right. Fight, well, what fights do you want to see happening today that you feel are holding back the sport? What fights do you think elevates? Spence Crawford. We got a couple more. I know you got some for me. That's uh, that's the biggest fight everybody wants to see. But there's other fights I'm pretty sure that you know, yo, or your personally that you think yo, I want to see that they need to make it happen. Let me explain something. To you. I don't give a shit about boxing. I'm just in it because I'm good at it. 
I'm not in it to watch TV. I don't buy pay per view. I don't watch. It. I don't give a shit. I just am proud of what I've done and I'm good at what I do. You gotta remember, I made Baduche. I made my sister four time world champ, three weight divisions. I made my brothers Golden Glove champs twice and Golden Gloves. I'm a pure teacher. I'm the realist. Teacher, that's, that's, that's good. I no, put, it's real. You, you, it's written in stone. We know it's written in stone. This, I want to put you out here so the people can know. I feel like you ain't never get your flowers. You don't. And I wanted to give you that I attention. Don't, I don't care. Nah, you, you need your flowers, man. You, there's, less, there's trainers with less accolades than you haven't accomplished nothing that you did in the ring or outside the ring. It was something I wanted to put out I there, man. Hurt That's what I teach. My secret in boxing was to hurt people. Like, you see my numbers again? My whole object was you're going to come, I'm going to hit you. You're going to feel me. And that's what I teach. I taught that to my dude. I taught that to my sister. And I taught that to my brothers. And I taught Brahmi. I got to put you on the spot here. Your top five fighters of all time. My top? Sugar Ray Robinson's got to be number one. Uh, Muhammad Ali's number two or three. You know? Um, um, Uh, Tappy Al is a great, he's a friend and a great fighter. He was a true warrior. So, those are my guys. You got, a, you got a lot of passion. You always, you show tough love. I see, you know, you work with the kids a lot. You always teaching them to the next level. Right. Not every kid has a guy like you in the gym or in their corner. What motivation you could give to the youth that's trying to get to the next level? Coming from a person like you that's went pro, has trained world champions, has put straps around people's waist. What message you want to give to the youth that's, you know, right now starting to get into boxing or just currently just doing it right now? Just be hungry. And remember this. You have your good days and you have your bad days. That's part of life. You've got to take the bad days and you got to throw them under the rug. You always got to stay positive. You know, I was about to quit boxing till I woke up in the morning. I lost in the regionals. I got robbed. I lost in the regionals, right? Check this one out. And I was like, I'm not going to do this no more. And back then, they had radios and TVs. Mike Tyson just lost. To Buster Douglas. Upset of all time. That was the biggest <laughs> upset ever. He could lose. Fuck it. Ain't no shame in my game, right? Yeah. <laughs> and what do you what do you prepare a fighter for more? Do you like to prepare a fighter physically first or do you like to prepare him mentally first? Uh, both. It's gotta be both. You gotta both go hand in hand. You, you got to put the work in and you got to be mentally sure. And how do, you, how do you spot talent in a fighter? Because some people just have that niche where they can know this guy's it. He just needs the right trainer to push him and get him where he needs to go. Right. What I do is I love once again. So I will never underestimate any man that decides that they want to fight. Never. If you want to be a fighter, and you want me to train you, I'm going to give you 100. You got a chance. And what, one one last, two couple questions before we wrap it up. What is one of the things that you feel is a bump in the road for these fighters nowadays? They got more distractions, you know, more money, women, social media. What's, what, what's something that you see that is a fighter's downfall more today than in your time? Um, Many boys. They weak. They have no substance. They 
don't have no anger. Their mom is poised. 90% of them. Her mom is poised. They soft. So what I suggest is that you got to come into this sport with hunger. You got to really want this. Not for, it's not for the week. Honey boy, I appreciate your time. Big bro, it was a pleasure.